Well, I think the first and foremost reason why President Obama went to Israel and the West Bank and Jordan was uh, for a reset of his relationship with the people and leadership of Israel. I think he recognized um, that the first term got off on the wrong foot um, with the people and leadership of Israel, and this soured really not just U.S.-Israeli relations, but put a damper on many American interests in the region, the peace process, for example, which we're still trying to recover from. And I think he decided, I get a second chance, I'm going to do this differently. We're going to start off on a new page. And I know that people try to over-intellectualize this trip and look for all the small aspects of what was achieved and not was achieved. The most important part of this trip is this, the emotional, uh, the attempt to create an emotional connection with the people in leadership. I think it's basically because the president uh, uh, most likely believes that sometime in the near future, this year, next year, there'll be a major Iran crisis. Maybe it'll be military, or maybe it'll be the United States trying to do a negotiated agreement with Iran about which uh, some might be quite skeptical. And he will want the people of Israel to think that he has their best interests in mind and that he has a lot of credit in their bank when he begins to deal with that crisis. That's the most important aspect. There are quite a few other policy takeaways from this trip that uh, deserve attention. Uh, first, um, uh, the president had a significant shift in U.S. policy concerning the resumption of Israeli-Palestinian peace talks, uh, a shift toward the Israeli position, which is that these peace talks should occur without precondition. And the fact that he made this um, position public, standing next to the Palestinian leader, Mahmoud Abbas, only underscored the importance of his shift. Uh, secondly, uh, the president helped engineer uh, the beginning of a thaw in the relationship between um, the Israeli leadership and the Turkish leadership. Uh, just as the president was taking off from Israel, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu called up Prime Minister Erdogan on the phone, and they had their first face-to-face -face or phone-to-phone, -phone, as it were, conversation in quite a long time. And I think this was only made possible by the public rebuke that President Obama gave to Erdogan when President Obama went to the tomb of Theodore Herzl, uh, the ideological founder of Zionism. Essentially, President Obama endorsed Zionism, not just Israel, but the ideological basis of Israel, which was a rebuke to Erdogan, who only um, um, recently criticized Zionism as a crime against humanity. And the popular sense is, of course, that Erdogan um, is one of Obama's best friends in the world. But that Obama would publicly rebuke Erdogan so clearly, I think, gave Netanyahu the political cover for him to call up Erdogan and um, reestablish dialogue. Um, so those are two important policy takeaways. I'd say a third takeaway is... Um, an agreement with Netanyahu not to make a public issue about their still lingering disagreement over the timetable for Iran's nuclear program. Let me go into this in some uh, detail. Uh, in his General Assembly speech uh, last September, um, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu laid out um, a timetable where he said by spring, or at the latest by summer 2013, Iran will, will cross a threshold that will necessitate um, perhaps military action to stop their nuclear program. President Obama recently said, in his view, it will take Iran a year, perhaps a 2014, before Iran achieves a nuclear weapon that he said he would prevent before they achieve it. So he says there's a year before action would be necessary. Netanyahu was asked about this at his press conference. And Netanyahu decided to take the high road and to say he agrees with the president. It'll be a year before Iran um, could achieve a nuclear weapon. But that's not what Netanyahu said last September. Then he said it would be spring or summer before Iran achieves a threshold amount of nuclear enrichment, which is very different than being able to put together 
the entire nuclear device. So he decided when he was asked at the press conference in Jerusalem not to have a public row with Obama and instead to say, yes, the president's right. Of course, my timetable is right too. It'll be spring or summer when our red line is crossed and it'll be a year when his red line is crossed. But he didn't want to have a public fight about this while the president was in Jerusalem.